Last call for rain. We've got a couple showers and thunderstorms out there, but it may be a while before we see another shot. We'll look at that and the falling temperatures that are coming with it. Jason. Also first and four, one of the men who has died after this weekend's mass shooting in Austin, Texas, has ties to Michigan. What we're learning coming up. Plus, President Biden, as we just mentioned, front and center today as he wraps up his first NATO summit. And here's Paul. Why the backstory behind this mural is even more important today than it was when it was painted four years ago. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe in for Karen today. First at four, a sad update in the weekend mass shooting in Austin. We've learned one of the victims who had been living in Michigan has died. 25 year old Doug Cantor was killed in the Saturday morning shooting in one of Austin's busiest nightlife areas. 13 others were hurt. Family members say Cantor was visiting Austin. Police say the shooting reportedly started as an argument between two shooters. One of them, a teenager, is in custody, but a second suspect remains on the run. Tonight at 5, we'll take a closer look at Cantor's life, including his time at Michigan State and the University of Michigan. At least one person is dead after a triple shooting in Highland Park. The shooting happened on Geneva Street near 2nd. Two men were shot and taken to the hospital. A third victim, a woman, was killed. Police are still investigating what led to this shooting. A major investment into child care in the state of Michigan. Governor Whitmer wants to use the $1.4 billion in federal funding to expand access to high quality child care and make it more affordable. She wants to help provide more financial support and security to child care providers and early child educators. The biggest chunk of the funding would go toward grants to child care businesses to open their doors again. The governor says the recovery from the pandemic depends on child care. Our recovery depends on access to quality, affordable child care. Our state's economic recovery depends on us getting this right. The governor also announcing a plan to expand child care eligibility, making low or no cost child care available to about 150,000 more kids. To the latest with the coronavirus now, Michigan seeing a steady positive rate below 2%. The state reports 338 new cases. That's a two-day total from yesterday and today. It does include eight more lives lost. On the vaccine front, more than 308 million doses have been administered in the U.S., with 60% of Michiganders 16 and older having received at least one dose of the vaccine now. It appears there is another strong COVID-19 vaccine as well. Today, Novavax announced after its phase three trials, the vaccine is more than 90% effective against the virus and variants. Data also shows it's 100% effective against moderate to severe COVID cases. The company says its shot is 93% effective against variants, including the alpha variant. It is planning to file for emergency youth author use authorization with the FDA soon. If it's authorized, it'll be the U.S.'s fourth COVID vaccine. All right, let's check the forecast on a Monday. And uh, boy, we were hoping for just a little relief. Maybe we're going to get that this week. Hey, Ben. Yeah, uh, at least from the temperatures and humidity, they're going to do us a big favor. But we are not done with our rain chances just yet. We saw quite a few of them last week. Some of us did not get a whole lot, but there's uh, a really a train of showers and thunderstorms sort of paralleling 75. One of those just rolled through the city. Northern parts of Oakland County, though, seeing most of that activity right now. No lightning strikes as of yet, but again, just some heavy downpours as these continue tracking off to the south and east, and they'll probably be with us at least in spots through the evening hours tonight. Temperatures have made it as high as 80 degrees in Detroit, but just about everybody in the 70s right now, close to 80 down there in Monroe, and it's going to be a pleasant night. The humidity's already dropped, but it drops even further. And wait, do you see the temperatures for the rest of the week? We'll check all that out in just a few minutes. Jason. All right, see you then, Ben. President Biden arriving at his first NATO summit today with a key message for European allies as they tackle a slate of topics. Kimberly Gill following this from the newsroom and Kim, the summit is also a prelude to that big meeting with President Biden and Vladimir Putin. It is and Jason, good afternoon to you. President Biden using the summit today as a clear message to America's allies that the U.S. will have their backs. It's a stark contrast 
to his predecessor, former President Donald Trump, who criticized NATO nations for over-relying on the United States. NATO leaders cited the dangers of more frequent, more complex cyber attacks, rising challenges posed by China, and a Russian threat to Euro-Atlantic security. So also today, President Biden met one-on-one -on -one with the president of Turkey. The relationship between the U.S. and Turkey has been rocky, with Russia and China at the center of tensions. But Turkey will play a critical role in Afghanistan after U.S. troops depart there later this year. The president spoke to reporters just moments ago. Listen. NATO stands together. That's how we met every other threat in the past. It's our greatest strength as we meet our challenges of the future, and there are many. And everyone, everyone in that room today understood the shared appreciation, quite frankly, that America is back. Meanwhile, the Biden-Putin sit-down will take place Wednesday in Geneva. We'll have more tonight on today's summit when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Jason, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, thanks, Kim. Sure. Of the hundreds of incredible building murals in the Detroit area, this one on the city's east side has captured our attention for the last few years. It was painted by a young mural artist as a tribute to his neighbors that he called guardians of the neighborhood. But as Paula Tutman recently discovered, there is a mystery that now surrounds one of the people in this mural. The backstory of this mural at Mitchell and Gratiot across from St. Vincent de Paul is actually stunning because this is more than just a painting on a building. It's how it brought this entire community together. But it's even more important today because the backstory of the backstory really starts with these flowers at the base of the building. The people in this mural were not conjured by the spectacularly talented brain and brilliant hands of mural artist Pat Perry. They are real. They were real. Naomi Edmonds, the neighborhood fix-it lady in Jack of All Trades, and Charles Stickman Hammock, who felt valued for the first time when he saw his 54-foot self on the side of a building. We met them both in 2018. Yeah, I love it. Pat did it. He generating people can live together, white and black. All you have to do is just come around. For the artist whose work is peppered throughout the metro area of all the astonishing large-scale paintings he does, this one was particularly personal. Both Naomi and Stickman were really uh, vital to me understanding how to uh, exist here and how to be a good neighbor, and they uh, were very open in receiving me when I don't think they had to be, and uh, we just became close friends. But today, the flowers at the base of the mural are to mark the passing of Naomi. My mom had cancer, and um, it went in remission, but um, when it came back, it came back with a vengeance. She died two years ago, but there is no grave site and no headstone to visit, and so her family comes here to pay their respects. Anytime I come down grass, I always say, hey, Mom, I love you. But also gone in a flash. Hey, Charlie, stick man. Stick man, who got lost from the neighborhood during COVID. He was in and out of the hospital and then was transferred to a nursing home. Eventually, he got transferred to a different nursing home after being bopped around a lot, and uh, we kind of lost track of where he is or if he's OK. Because Pat is not blood. I think HEPA laws, and I'm not, you know, blood family, and uh, it's just hard to keep track when you're just a friend or a neighbor. And so he doesn't know if he survived his battles with cancer or the pandemic or any other things that make humans so fragile. We all want to know where, where Charlie is and if he's okay. And, you know, I think everybody wants some closure on that. They want to know, has anyone seen this man? Does anyone know where he is? Is he safe? Is he happy? The people in this close-knit corner of Detroit want him to know that while he and Naomi are still here as sentries on the avenue, they're also still very much a part of their hearts. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Absolutely, and we sure hope there's a happy ending to that story. Paula, thanks. How old do you think the average car on the road is? We'll have that answer in about 13 minutes. Plus, stories making headlines across America, including this massive fire in Illinois. But we are back on the floor with a scary scene at 30,000 feet and why several passengers scrambled to take down another passenger.
I got vaccinated because I wanted to hang out with my friends again. I think it's really important to keep my family safe. To keep myself and my teammates safe so that we can get back to working out safely. One more step to getting rid of this pandemic altogether. And I was lucky enough to get my second dosage of the COVID vaccine. And to build up that herd immunity. I got vaccinated to protect my family, friends, and myself. So I went to do my part as a citizen of my community. I got vaccinated. Please get the vaccine facts at clickondetroit.com. Sandra Ali shares a candid conversation with local mental health workers. Hear what they believe will be the new challenges for all of us as we move forward. Tomorrow on Local 4 News Today.